fairly easy. We've created a virtual machine now. Actually, we've created the virtual machine box. In order to, for it to be a truly functioning virtual machine, we need to install a guest operating system on that virtual machine. I'm going to show you how to do that now. In order to install a guest operating system, first thing we got to do is power on the virtual machine. Let's go ahead and do that now. You can recommendation, power on the virtual machine, okay. Go ahead and power on the virtual machine. You can see the virtual machine is powered on and we can even look at that virtual machine from the summary. Summary, and then we can click here and we can see, we can use the web console or VM remote console. I am just gonna use the web console here. The remote console is usually a lot more responsive. So you can see here, great, we got things running, but there's no operating system. How do we get the operating system onto a virtual machine now? Well, we have to go back here to the virtual machine itself. Let's open up VM hardware. You can see we have a notification that no tools are installed. And we have this CD-ROM drive. If we click here on the CD-ROM drive, we can connect to a host CD. So a CD that would be installed, uh, that is uh, currently on the host itself, or we can go to a CD or DVD image on a data store or something, an ISO image that you may have uploaded to your content library. We're going to go to the data store itself. We're going to open up this data store, see if there's anything here. I believe I added something. Did I add something? Floppies. Uh-oh. Where is it? Uh-oh. Let's go back. Let's see. Did I put it on a different data store? So we're gonna click on the data store, we'll go to files, and I'll show you how to upload this particular iOS. Oh, it is there, iOS image. But if we're gonna upload, let's say it wasn't here and I had to quickly upload an ISO here for our installation. We would go to the upload, we would choose the image that we wanted, let's say the free NAS or the, and then click open. Now, a lot of times people get in trouble here because when they try and upload an image here, they haven't validated the certificate of the host itself. If you validate the certificate, you'll be able to upload just fine. So we can see that there is, that Ubuntu is there. Let's see if we can throw it in a folder to make it more visible. Let's call this iOS images. So I created, create this folder and let's move this item move to uh, 211 iOS images, click OK. And you're gonna see it's moving the file. It is complete. Now let's go back to our workflow. Let's go back to our virtual machine. We can see that nothing's installed. Click, hopefully that fixed our issue. 211, 222 iOS images. There we go. Now we can see that the Ubuntu image is there and we can actually utilize that. We'll click OK. It's connected. And let's see. I thought this was gonna work. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Uh, it's gonna look like this and it's gonna say not found. You just press enter. Uh, once you press enter, it'll actually pull up the operating system and do the installation for you. So here we can see that now we can go through the installation process for this virtual machine. As the installation process is, is going, this is going to be the guest operating system install. And nothing's different here from any guest operating system install you've ever done. Um, depending on the guest operating systems you've done, obviously. But um, you're not gonna see anything, nothing weird's gonna pop up and say, hey, this is a virtual machine, uh, you need to install this, 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 and the other. No, it, usually it goes through very, very well, especially for those operating systems that are supported. We're gonna go ahead and install. Continue. Now, a lot of people get a little, a little scared here. Erase disk, am I gonna end up erasing the disk for my virtual machine or ESXi hypervisor? No, remember the VMDK file here is our hard drive. We have nothing on that VMDK file at all because we created it for this purpose. So we can go ahead and install now and erase everything on there without affecting the rest of my environment. Okay, gonna create these formats. 
Um, well, that's not correct. I'm actually right here right now. We'll, we'll pretend I'm in Denver. Why not? Uh, you can see the keyboard layout. Um, we'll go ahead and click continue. Okay, so that's, that's the actual process for creating a virtual machine. Now let's say, because I don't want to go through the entire operating system install here, because it should take a long time. And I don't want you guys to sit through that. You guys are beyond that, right? So let's say we've actually already done the install. And then we harden our operating system and we install our VMware tools. What would I want your next step to be? Well, your next step should be, if you have your base, you've configured it to the nines, that operating system is ready for generic applications within your organization. I would suggest at that point, this is the golden opportunity to right click, go to template and click and convert to a template. So in order for that to work, we got to first power off the virtual machine. Once that virtual machine is powered off, simply by right clicking and going with power off, I would right click again and go to templates, convert to a template. Now this is going to take this entire virtual machine out. It's going to disappear and turn completely into a template, but that's okay. Because once we have that template, we can deploy virtual machines from that template as many times as we want. So really, really easy way to get a template, uh, to get deployment going in your environment. I really love this option. I suggest that everybody uses it. All right, so we have a virtual machine as a template now. And now if we needed to, to deploy, we could new VM from this template simply by clicking on this template. Now, one of the things I want you to note is this. Templates aren't located here. You see that lab VM one disappeared. Templates aren't located here. Templates are located one tab over where it says VM and templates. And this is where our templates actually exist. If I right click on this template, I can deploy from this template new VM from this template, and I create another virtual machine. I'll go through the naming of this virtual machine and everything like that. But when this virtual machine deploys, it's gonna deploy with the guest operating system and the configurations I had in place. So massive time saver there. So right clicking gives me the ability to power on, power off, suspend. We'll talk more about snapshots and other things later. If I look at a virtual machine here, and now let's say I need to edit the hardware. It's not working out the way it's supposed to. What I can do is right click and then go to edit settings. Edit settings gives me the ability to set up the CPU, memory, hard drive like we talked about earlier, even add new devices, a PCI device if I require it. But it also allows me to change my VM options. Remember I said we could change the name? Let's say I didn't want this anymore. Because we created a template, this isn't VM2 anymore, this is VM1. And now I can use the remote cons console options. Anything you see that's grayed out is grayed out because the virtual machine is powered on. So if I powered off this virtual machine, I would be able to make the changes. We can see our VM tool settings we talked about. Powering on, after resuming, suspending. Our power management ability to suspend a virtual machine. Our boot options. BIOS or EFI, the ability to delay the boot options if we need, force BIOS setup. Encryption, this is one of the new features. We could set up encryption, and we'll talk more about that later, but this is where that setting is. We can encrypt booting. And then next, we have our debugging, our swap file location. So we can change our swap file location for this virtual machine to the default which is the cluster or host configuration, or the virtual machine directory itself. So wherever the virtual machine directory is, we'll store it there. Or data store specified by host, our configuration parameters, our latency sensitivity, and then finally our fiber channel configuration, if we have fiber channel set up for this virtual machine. So lots of configurations that we can look to. Uh, we showed you how to install the operating system. We showed you how to do a template, create a template, and even deploy from a template. I can, as long as I'm choosing a resource that has access to that template, if I go to new virtual machine, I can deploy from that template I chose. Watch, it'll allow me to choose 
we'll have VM1, which is the one we created. And then I can deploy directly from that template. We'll call this the lab template deploy. I would click next where we want this located. If I chose something that's out of whack, does not have that, uh, the features that I need or that the template was created on, we'll get a compatibility listing. This, this cluster is not in DRS mode. That virtual machine was created in a cluster with DRS. That's an issue. So if I come back to this, you'll see that we have compatibility again. Then we would have our disk formats. And notice we're already set up. But if I want any changes, we could go ahead and, and make them, OK? So let's go back here. Let me make sure, 211, next. OK, now you see my compatibility issues disappeared. Let's go back here, 212. I'm going to go click next. Oh, that one went as well. That was a weird little, I wonder if it just didn't update enough. Oh, huh. weird. So we go ahead and go there next, and I click Finish. And you'll be able to see that lab template deployment is there. It is just not powered on. And we can power it on simply by right-clicking power, power on. 